my comfort com comes first, America first, Europe first, uh, who cares about uh, your life. Uh, we should think of ways how to face as humans, but also as, as, as intellectuals, as theoreticians, the challenge, this challenge, which is a challenge of our times. We must theorize solutions and possibilities, uh, both short-term and long-term long -term ones. Now, of course, the short-term ones are most, fam uh, most uh, uh, painful. The thing is that uh, uh, the states cannot, it seems, cannot think, can't think long term. They think it's short term. They think of uh, the uh, uh, electoral, uh, uh, electoral uh, uh, results uh, of the leaders uh, if they accept some migrants or if they don't accept some migrants. The elections would be uh, like next month or next year. They don't want to jeopardize their uh, uh, situation. So they go along uh, the uh, uh, general uh, uh, feeling of uh, unfriendliness, of non-hospitality to to migrants, and uh, they have no uh, long-term uh, long uh, solutions. We can see it in France because they don't even build any long-term uh, solutions uh, that build, I mean physically, places where they could uh, uh, receive them, but also uh, uh, in uh, legislature, they, we need to have uh, a development there uh, about uh, how to receive these people and to provide quick solutions uh, when needed. And also there is this basic uh, and uh, inoperable uh, distinction uh, which comes from the Cold War uh, between uh, political immigrants and economic immigrants. Like uh, during uh, the Cold War and during the, the um, uh, when we had the Geneva Convention in the 50s, you know, uh, the idea was that uh, migrants, immigrants were coming from Eastern Europe they would be political immigrants. They were against uh, uh, socialism. Uh, they were anti-communist, and we welcomed them. Uh, they did not used to come for economic reasons, uh, or we thought it, even if they did additionally, it wouldn't matter because they were few, and we could give them jobs. Uh, and uh, uh, but economic uh, immigrants were to be uh, uh, refused, were to be rejected. Nowadays we can't really distinguish between political and economic uh, uh, immigrants. And uh, the politicians don't want to do this. They still uh, make the distinction which uh, doesn't work. So uh, people who come to Europe for reasons that we call economic uh, come also for political reasons that are behind those economic reasons, but that we don't want to see, and especially we don't want to see our responsibility for uh, that uh, situation. It is very difficult to go against this distinction uh, of political and uh, economic uh, uh, migrants, uh, immigrants, but uh, sooner or later we shall have to uh, uh, 
somehow break through and uh, make it understandable that this distinction is not viable. It is not viable. And, this is, and it is the basis of the situation we have today, legally. There, I think I'd better stop here and uh, maybe you have uh, some comments and, and, and additional ideas and critique. You're very welcome. Thank you. Uh, you know, uh, expressions uh, you know, uh, 
uh, no more Polish vermin or something like that. Not, uh, not uh, only against the, the, the South uh, Italian, but uh, against those migrants from other part of uh, Europe, right? But, uh, you know, just a half century ago, uh, during the uh, Second, Second uh, World War, uh, the same, uh, the same, same uh, country are so hospitably receiving uh, not a lot of uh, migration or refugees from all uh, from Europe and continental Europe, not only refugees but also uh, armies that are uh, beaten and, and broken, you know, <laughs> like they call, uh, and many exile uh, regimes. Mm -hmm. You know, so at that time you have a, a very different uh, outlook toward this and. Than, than the 2016, you know. So, so this epochal, uh, uh, I think, is really, you know, uh, uh, make us uh, think that uh, the current situation may change, maybe uh, several decades later, if the condition changes. Thank you. Uh, is this working? Thank you. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you are speaking reason. You are home. You are speaking reason. Of course, it should be like that. And I am sure that someday, uh, uh, obviously, demography speaks, and our demographs too in Europe have been telling us: listen, the, the birth rate is such that we need uh, immigrants. You see, uh, but the public opinion doesn't follow. So uh, it means that uh, probably we need to do some work intellectual work in order to have uh, uh, these ideas pass through and be accepted and it will take some time because uh, we are uh, politically uh, in Europe uh, uh, in a situation which is not uh, very good in the sense that, that there is a lot of right-wing nationalist populism uh, that uh, sustains anti-migrant, uh, uh, anti-refugee uh, sentiments, you see, which are uh, very strong and very visible. And also, our societies are not uh, do not have a cohesion at this time. We do not have a good co a cohesion. Our societies, see France, for example. France is a divided country. It's 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 very divided. There is. A, uh, no consensus on, 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 on uh, many things, on most things. So uh, the situation is politically not very uh, sane. As for the epoch, when I said uh, this is an epochal uh, issue, uh, uh, yes, I couldn't define the, 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 the timing, this is why I didn't define it also, and you are very right, we don't know. At some point, you know, it will uh, uh, turn over, but uh, uh, we can't tell when that turnover is going uh, to come. It seems that uh, turnover to, to an opposite sentiment uh, comes usually after uh, a lot of violence. This, <laughs> this is what I have from uh, uh, my political experience in my uh, lifetime. I mean, it first gets much worse before it can get uh, better, and it gets much worse. It can last for very long being, being worse. Uh, and we are all looking forward to the situation that you described. Of course, everyone knows in Paris, if you go to a restaurant uh, to eat uh, French food, all French food is cooked by African cooks. All restaurants have African cooks. They are excellent. They are not French. There are three or five famous uh, big French cooks, and their students have been African, and they work in, in the restaurants, they eat their food. So, uh, like in cuisine, uh, so in everything else. Uh, we hope we shall get those people through, but uh, I fear that it will take some more time. I don't know how long. Yeah, when you talk about exception, migrants as exception, 
you said something like uh, migrants as uh, exception or not national, of course, but not even citizens. So what difference do you make between nationals and citizens? If you take things from the angle of the state, there is no difference. No state uh, in Europe would consider people who are not nationals as citizens. So it's about the same, nationals and citizens. I am from uh, Western or Western Europe, Europe patterns, it's the same. It's a tricky question. I was brought up thinking that uh, uh, citizenship uh, and, and uh, nationality are not the same thing, you see. I was brought up thinking that uh, uh, nationality is uh, uh, you belong to a nation, to me, it's irrelevant whether you consider it a nation or an ethnic group or whatever. It's one of those identity things. Uh, while uh, citizenship is uh, your administrative uh, belonging uh, to a state, uh, which has nothing, uh, 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 which should have nothing national about it. This is also because I come from uh, Yugoslavia, where we had this distinction, which was very useful, I must say. Uh, when I came to France, uh, I saw that this distinction is not uh, uh, made or it is uh, uh, forgotten, uh, because uh, citizens are nationals. Nationals are citizens, right, you see. Uh, but uh, in a French, hmm? it's very European and the French. If you look at it in Indonesia, they have their citizenship, but they are not nationals. They are not Indonesian, right? So they are different, treated uh, differently in terms of citizenship. The same for Myanmar, the same for Malaysia, the same for Vietnam. They are not nationals. They are multinational. But the citizenship then is differentiated, okay, by blood and so on. So that becomes a problem. And also, the citizenship act started in the colonial period. The Dutch, the French, the British, uh, East India Company, they differentiated the citizens uh, in terms of their race. Right. And then in the state, building process in the post-colonial period. They repeated it, but they did reverse it, so-called uh, uh, Indonesian currency and supremacy work and so on. Indonesia belongs to Indonesian people, right? But not including Aboriginals, East Timor, West Papua, and other island people. The same for uh, Vietnam, Khmer Kham, the home from Thailand, or Myanmar. Rohingya, they, they, they were designated as non-citizens only after 1982. But the Chinese too, they don't have this equal citizenship, so they cannot move around outside of their birthplace. Internally, they, are, they don't have freedom to move. So, so this is uh, just some debate that we have had with uh, Alain. Citizenship or citizens is a problem, especially in Southeast Asia. I don't know uh, whether that's not the case in, in Europe. Considering the Ottoman tradition legacy in the past, so when we say Europe has to open up, open up to whom, with whom, who are excluded from Europe? When we say Europeans, it seems that it's a, a, so it seems that the problem is for the Europeans. But Europe, Europeans, they are so much uh, complicated. It's in Europe. They are not sometimes uh, considered as part of it. And this, uh, uh, we, we talked about this uh, Dark and Road. For those cities who open up for uh, migrants or refugees, are those Ottoman uh, uh, residents and so on. So that's very mixed up. I don't know whether they really share equal citizenship. When we say citizens are city dwellers, 
but they are uh, regarded as different, not only nationals, but religion and other other issues. But uh, sorry for my uh, interruption. No, but, uh, you're right, and I, I have an idea now. Uh, German language distinguishes also Bürgerschaft, citizenship, and 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 nationality. Uh, so in in the German. Um, Political tradition, the difference is there, you see, and uh, uh, I believe it is so in Slavic languages also. I'm not sure about other Slavic languages, but I suspect we have a difference. And in any case, in, I was uh, taught to uh, see citizenship as an administrative belonging, which is neutral. Uh, uh, you see, uh, nationality is never neutral uh, emotionally. Right? Nationality is something uh, you belong to your nation, you, you, you are a patriot or you are not a patriot, but there are feelings involved. In citizenships, in citizenship, it is neutral. This is how I became, became yeah. a French but citizen. Not but, it's not I'm not sure I'm a French not national. It's not but okay. but French everyone is equal in front of law uh, based on their citizenship, it's not the case. Yeah, no, no, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there, uh, I think there is also a global um, kind of set of economic reasons to this European hostility to migrants. Europe has lost its relative economic place in the world. Uh, it has collected uh, the benefits of, of colonialism, the, the rent of colonialism, 20, 30 years ago. Uh, and it is relatively shrinking economically compared to the new emerging powers. China, even Africa has a very much higher growth rate, etc. This economic shrinking, relative economic shrinking, of course has its impact on the aging and shrinking of the growth rate. And culturally, uh, it produces a feeling of insecurity, and fear and unjustified uh, idea that uh, migration will uh, is a threatening phenomenon. And uh, interestingly, uh, the fear of migrants is not in those uh, environments where you find many of them. It's not in big cosmopolitan cities like London, like Paris, like New York. In those cities, the extreme right has very, very low electoral success. In Paris, the extreme right got, I think, less than 4% in the last elections. You find that fear, the highest fear of migrants in, in small villages where people have never seen uh, or very few persons, we've seen very few persons of a different color of skin or different behavior or different religion. Yeah, like the so it's, it's maybe, maybe there is a lot of room still for uh, pedagogic activism, I would say political pedagogic activism uh, to uh, influence, uh, 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 to try to influence the, the change of uh, mindset uh, uh, and uh, idea about migrants. Other comments or questions? Yeah, pedagogical activism is very important, I think. Not only in schools, but in all, all others. To change the concept of so-called uh, citizens or nation, state. But uh, other comments or questions or cases? Yeah. Um, before you were talking about uh, that there are no facilities for immigrants. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm from Austria, and there we have a different kind of problem right now. It's a city problem, but um, when there was the migration wave, wave in 2015, 16, so the NGOs and organizations who were helping the Immigrants, they and also the state. In the 50s. What was that in the 50s? 15th. Ah, 2015. 2015. Okay, that's yes. right. Yes. Um, 
and they um, tried to get like every house which was on the market, like big old sc or schools and um, yeah, big houses, and they made contracts up to like the, for the next ten to twenty years. But right now there are not that many immigrants coming back to or to Austria because of different reasons. There is like something border control and so yeah. it's really hard that immigrants get to Austria and so it costs a lot of money. Yeah, if sure. we would use the money for yeah for the people it would be so nice and helpful. But yeah. Yeah. It's, so it's, it's one of the absurdities. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. there are many such absurdities. And then you were talking about Italy mm -hmm. and the female um, Subtitles, and if someone would be yes, interested, sure. very good, very good. It's about the, the last event in you've seen. Yes. Ah, excellent, yes. okay. excellent, excellent. Yeah, yes. so everyone should see. A good record. Yeah. There's probably one about Via Camp too. Yeah. Probably. And the reason why we don't hear about um, NGOs getting to see right now and saving people is that because the big ships are right now um, in the harbors and the police are there and mm. they are not allowed to enter the sea. Yeah, yeah. They obstruct them. They don't yeah. Let them. Mm. And mm. Also, yeah, you were talking about politics in Italy and I was thinking, okay, but I know it's not right what's happening there that they are closing the harbors. But there is no help from the, from other countries in Austria, this is true. such as Austria. This is true. I mean, we have the facilities; we could help. And I'm so frustrated with politics that no one. Why can't we take the people and put them to all the countries? Yeah. You know, not just to Italy. I I know that Italy is really frustrated right now because they're on the sea; they have the right. Exactly. But what about uh, Austria, Czech Republic? Exactly. Yes, right. We're, we're not on the sea. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. very right. You're very right. It's exactly like that. Yeah. Thank you. Because uh, when you mentioned in the page six uh, about the Francis, the relation between the Francism and the uh, technocratic which is, uh, how to say, uh, the expert of the governance. And I really agree with that because even in the professions that will influence the policy of the government, they, they have many uh, opinions. One of them, maybe some, some professions they will welcome the refugee or migrants. It is just because we need the labor. We have a lack of labor. That's why we will welcome the uh, migrants to uh, come as the labor for the production. But actually, uh, especially in China, when the big cities, uh, some of our professions will say, if Shanghai wants to be the global city, then we will welcome the migrant workers to work here. We should not uh, exclude them. But that uh, opinion, May, might be the only uh, positive opinion for the government to welcome the migrants. Mm -hmm. So that's very problematic for me because uh, we, we don't even mention about the right of the migrants to move and how they move freely. So um, I really want to hear uh, more from you about um, how this non-politics of the technocratic can really uh, influence the solution by the government, yeah. especially on the migrant issue. Yeah. It's very difficult to answer that question. I do not have a ready-made answer, uh, because I think that a lot of it uh, depends on uh, uh, how we get uh, through into public opinion. 
uh, which would then make pressure on the governments uh, to uh, change their politics. So it's a long process. These are processes that are relatively long. They are never quick, but uh, sometimes it happens that uh, big events or big uh, um, yeah, big events or, or accumulation.